Championship, Ailey and Corey are here with the call. Thank you very much, Maria. Hello, everybody, and welcome to round 10. It is I, Ailey Looney, alongside Corey Baumeister and friend. This is gonna be a spicy one. This Jun midrange deck, I like to call it Jun good stuff because, ooh wee, you just have all the best cards at all the different mana values in there. So Shoji Yasaoka versus Stefan Schutz, who's had an excellent weekend thus far, both players at eight and one. Let's take a look at these opening hands. What do you think about this matchup as we get a look? Yeah, this matchup is tough to really predict because like they were saying at the desk, uh, Schultz is just playing this really interesting deck that's playing a lot of cards we don't see. You know, a lot of treasures, <laughs> synergies, and not even playing Magda, you know, the, the card that you think you just always include into these treasure decks. So yeah. it's hard to really predict. Uh, from the is it side, from this Jeskai Storm side, excuse me, I really am not that worried, I would think, because there's only like three cards that deal with Goldspan Dragon, or excuse me, uh, six cards that deal with Goldspan Dragon in the game one configuration. So that's not a ton. So it's going to put a lot of pressure on finding those cards uh, to be able to deal with it. But yeah, it, it's tough to predict here because Shota is always bringing <laughs> something new and unique. And it always seems like Shota is the one who wins with his creations and nobody else can. <laughs> I mean, that just speaks to the level or the quality of player that Shota Yasuoka oh, yeah. is. A Hall of Famer, plenty of top finishes behind his name, and one of the fastest players that I have ever seen play. <laughs> I mean, I remember a game against Luis Scott Vargas, and both of them just... You, you, you know the mechanic blitz? Yeah, they're in that <laughs> mode all the time. It's just yeah. insane. I remember that match as well. A judge had to go and come up to them and tell them to slow down the play, which I don't think any judge has ever done in the history of Magic before, saying, we need you to slow it down. It's far too fast. First time for everything, huh? Yep, exactly. And even when, here for Stefan Schutz, excuse me. And even when Shota is usually playing control decks, is usually playing at that pace as well. You know, this is definitely, mm -hmm. you know, a more aggressive deck, um, but but still usually plays at that lightning pace, even with a slow one. For sure. It's a bit of a suboptimal expressive iteration there, not finding mm -hmm. the third land of the library as uh, Stefan would have liked, but Still not doing too bad, but an excellent start for Shota Yasaoka so far. Two drop into Ginny Fei, Jetmir's second. So any tokens that are created will either be a cat or a dog. Unfortunately, no cat dogs for any fans of that <laughs> franchise just yet. <laughs> there you go. And I think this is back-to-back -back games with you, Ailey, where we've been covering Stefan's match that he's bricked on expressive iteration. I think we're cursing him so far uh, when it comes to that card. Oh, he's probably cursing his cards. Don't you worry about it. Yeah. Here comes Fable of the Mirror Breaker. What's it going to be? Cat or dog? I'm guessing. I think it's, it's, it can be also Shaman, too. Oh. So it is a May yes. ability. Um, and the Shaman does seem a little bit more important than most of the tokens. But creating a yeah. treasure or something, you would much rather have a creature. For sure. It's nice to have the option, you know, cat, dog, or treasure. I'm pretty sure most cats would argue that they are treasures and you should <laughs> treat them as such. <laughs> as all good cats do. Exactly. It's just nice to have those options. So on Schutz's side of things, we've got big score times two. We have a Leer and a Goldspan Dragon to work towards. Two Leers, in fact. And Mask, sorry, March of Swirling Mist, which is a good way to protect or get something out the way if you don't want it on the battlefield. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much everything that this Jeskai Storm Dex wants is in Stefan's hand, except land number five. Being able to go big score this turn, maybe cast some kind of disruption, and then you can just win the game next turn if all things go according to plan. And now with Azika's Chariot coming down, as well as this Shaman being able to attack and create a treasure, that Infernal Grass will be available as a little bit of disruption for Shota. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a wrench in the works here where it's not just automatic good game if uh, Stefan <laughs> does find uh, land number five. Oh, for sure. I mean, at this point, uh, Shota is doing an excellent job of just applying the pressure because these two cats that Essica's Chariot makes, well, they could get an upgrade into the Hasty Kittens <laughs> that Ginny Fay creates. So let's see what Stefan can find here off of the big score, hopefully a way to just stem the bleeding and prevent a big chunk of damage being dealt. Yeah, definitely an upgrade. Good call getting rid of one of the leers because that's a lot of leers right there. Uh, <laughs> otherwise having three of them would have been a bit of a problem. Yeah, 
pesky legend rule. Ooh. Uh, All right. This is so this we, is really interesting here. Are we just trying to march of the swirling mist on the Jenny. shaman here, or maybe even both? I'm thinking creatures? Jenny. I guess you get to do both. Just, yeah. yeah. Just get those away so that there's not a chunk of damage flying at your face. Mm -hmm. Keep the cats and... just calm. No catnip for them. Yep, absolutely. So it not only does it create non-hasty cats, it makes sure that Shota will only have one mana. And if we're looking at the list uh, as you, uh, the fans, can be looking at right now, there is no one mana removal spell that deals with Goldspan Dragon. It's one ray of enfeeblement as the only interaction here. So a really heads up play where now Stefan is just gonna go off here. And how how big can he actually go off is another question. There's not a lot of resources here. So it's a bit of a problem. You have this big score, like we've been talking about in the other matches, mm -hmm. where it's, you know, quote unquote free, but you have three cards you very much want right now. So it's a huge decision of which one you actually have to or have to or want to get rid of here, because all three of these are big players and cards that you need. Yeah. Oh, well, my money's on the show of confidence going bye bye. Hopefully, Big Score can find some extra gas and then get Lear down on the battlefield and then just keep doing it, you know? Yep, the only way to get Lear on the battlefield is to string together, I guess, a couple of one mana cards like Spikefield Hazard mm -hmm. or finding that last copy of there Show of Confidence. So that does allow Lear to be cast, but nothing else. You know, yeah. post combat, you can spike field hazard your gold span and then just play Lear and then hope for the best, but it's not the greatest but, play. But don't forget that is if as soon as Lear's down, all the spells in the graveyard are available to him. So in response to an infernal grasp on the dragon, that does open up the opportunity to cast something else. It won't protect your dragon, but you get some value off of it before. You just won't bye have bye. any mana. Unfortunately, it'll be completely tapped out. But yeah, if you go to kill Goldspan specifically, but if Infernal yep. Grass gets pointed at Lear, yeah, then that's big trouble. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So here are the two five drops. The Izzet brothers in arms, Goldspan Dragon and Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. Hanging out, just chilling, you know, just waiting to kill you out of nowhere. Yeah, and it's so crazy here. Schultz was, um, or excuse me, Stefan was one mana away or one extra card away from actually being able to combo this off. If you could just mm. discard one extra card that wasn't that show confidence or Lear, it would have been on. Oh, yeah. So now an interesting decision here for Shota Yasuoka. Still has a pretty formidable Battlefield does also have the underdog in the graveyard that's at his disposal when he wants it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ready for see an how we oops, kick this turn like. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Nope, nothing there I'm interested in. Infernal Grask is in fact going towards a Leer Disciple of the Drown, so nothing for Goldspan Dragon doing here. And that is a lot of damage coming through. And now if we remember all those leers, one was exiled, you know, one was discarded to big mm -hmm. score, and then one was killed, that's three of them already. And uh, that's gonna be a big trouble because that is the ideal mm -hmm. draw. And yeah, Stefan just realized, I don't have any more of those in my deck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, Goldspan Dragon needs a little bit of help from his sea-dwelling really friend there. But we're gonna go to sideboards now and talk us through the decisions to be made in this matchup. Yeah, so for Stefan, you really want to just make sure that you have the right pieces of removal for Azika's Chariot uh, or Ginny Fey. We're seeing dragon fires that get brought in immediately. And then for Shota, we see a max out on Duresses, valuing that extremely highly. And then basically every piece of removal that can kill Goldspan or Lear, we even saw <laughs> Unleash the Inferno coming in to be able to just deal seven to one of these big things. And then can actually, you know, do a little bit of that double duty, can either kill mm -hmm. uh, Fable the Mirror Breaker um, and can kill even treasure a- Treasure tokens. Yeah, treasure token. And I suppose that's it, but that's still enough for one spell. Yeah, you know, if you get a two for one with any spell, you're gonna be happy with that, huh? 
Exactly, kind of doing its best Culligan's command <laughs> uh, for any older format fans. <laughs> Yeah, what did Reed do call it? Super Culligan's Command. Super Culligan's Command, yeah. yeah. So uh, when Reed saw this, this card... This is my final form, Goku. <laughs> when Reed saw this card, he was very excited. That's a that's the most <laughs> Reed Duke card I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I'd love to see it. So it shows it's ready to rock and roll. He doesn't just play fast. He also sideboards quickly. Yep. And Stefan is just deliberating the last few decisions to be made here. Is he happy with what he's got in here? Still see the three Leers, the three gold span dragons rocking out. But like you mentioned, yep. just bringing in as much interaction and removal as he possibly can for yep. the threats on the battlefield. Absolutely. And a reminder that Shota is so far ahead of the pack, 15 points clear of that line where he would no longer have a seat at the world championship. So this win, you know, maybe the, maybe two wins, something like that to mathematically lock him into the world championship and already sitting good, even if Shota were to just do a lot of losing. And if we see Shota win, you know, as we've seen time and time again, Shoto will be so extremely excited. We'll be able to very clearly see the joy on his face. Okay, maybe that's not true. Shoto is very <laughs> stoic. Even when I saw him win a pro tour so long ago, he was just very calm. You know, de sideboarded his deck and everything like that. Oh, yeah, I was like about that. to say, wasn't, yeah. didn't he just start de sideboarding? Well, Started I can tell you, Corey, yeah. if he wins this due to other results that have just come in, this is now a win and in to the world championship for Shota Yasuoka. There's no possible way that he can lose that seat if he wins this matchup against Stefan. So a little bit more to play for here. I don't think yeah. he knows that just yet though. So <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have a nice surprise at the end of this if he wins. Absolutely, absolutely. Gotta win one round out of the next uh, so many and Shota <laughs> sitting in a comfortable third go. place here uh, doing quite well. <laughs> oh, and he is so far ahead in the standings for the world championship race so even if he doesn't get it this time he is pretty likely to make it but i want to i want to put someone else into the world championship right Cedric, now you don't yes. get to decide we get to <laughs> <laughs> good one good one take that <laughs> All right, so both players just getting all their things down. Duress has taken a peek in the hand of Stefan Schutz, so Shota knows that there's some stuff to play around here, so it's going to be interesting to yep. see what he leads off here with, if it's just going to be the tenacious underdog or if he wants to get that Jawara disruption out of hand. Yep, pretty much, because it is that face-up Jawara disruption indicated by the little eyeball on that card, so you can safely play... Tenacious Underdog with an untapped land. You could play Den and then Tenacious Underdog to say, I dare you to counter this. And that's essentially <laughs> what Shota's doing here. It's being like, do you want to use up this Jwari Disruption? Because, well, I have some good four drops that I want to cast next turn yeah. uh, that couldn't be jwari So a nice little heads up play by Shota just saying, mm -hmm. I dare you. I dare you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Tenacious Underdog, you don't mind seeing it go into the graveyard because you just get it back. It's tenacious exactly. for a reason. It just keeps <laughs> getting up and keeps on swinging. And now next turn, I wouldn't be too shocked because we're going to see two mana be left open from Stefan again, that it's going to be Fable the Mirror Breaker into Azika's Chariot here because just getting one Azika's Chariot, uh, Dwari Disruption is too big of a, of a you know, a, a problem for Shota. So, and even though Azika's Chariot is legendary, it's still so powerful to just cast, even if you have another one on the battlefield, just getting four mana for four power is still very <laughs> yeah. good against these Jeskai uh, Storm decks. It's such a good card. Ooh. An expressive iteration, a suboptimal one once again, but there's a burn down the house, which will come in super handy against said cats. And uh, Fabler Mirror Breaker goes into exile, but he will be able to cast that here, opening up the way for Shota to do whatever the heck he wants for this turn. Yeah, <laughs> Stefan cannot find a land off Expressive Iteration to save his life here, but luckily we're late <laughs> enough in the game that this is still actually pretty good for Stefan because you do get two powerful spells. Yep. Some good stuff going on here for Stefan as well as for Shota Yasaoka does find that Riveteer's Charm, which is an, actually an excellent uh, combat to this Jeskai Storm deck because it's not a targeted ah. spell, right? It says, yeah. you've got to sacrifice, so you're the one that's got to do the work. I'm not targeting anything. Exactly, yeah, targets the, or it doesn't target, but it, it has you sacrifice the highest mana value, mm. and that is always Leer or Goldspan Dragon, so it's yeah. going to be a very nice 
especially answer against Goldspan Dragon because you don't get that treasure where then Stefan could use something like a negate or Jewari Disruption to protect it. So kiss your combo goodbye. As we're going <laughs> to see Essica's Chariot hit the battlefield here. Two kitty cats up against one little treasure goblin. Fable of Mirror Breaker allows some more looting to happen, so let's get rid of that. Jawari Disruption, which isn't useful right now, and draw into a big score and a voltage surge. So sculpting his hand quite nicely here. Yeah, and nicely because of that voltage surge, the Shaman can get in there. Because if you go to crew up Azika's Chariot, you just get rid of that treasure, deal with the Chariot straight <laughs> away. Uh, but instead, Shota doesn't bite for that and uh, nope. just loses one cat. A definite trade up with trading a yep. Vanilla 2-2 versus a Shaman that's able to create a treasure each turn. <laughs> sure. Both players have been quite aware of what the other player is trying to get them to do. Yes. You know, that, that's one part of magic that you learn as you become more experienced with the game is like, okay, I want my opponent to do this. How do I get yes. them to do that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the the mind tricks, if you will, mm -hmm. absolutely is a very big part of the game. And, uh, and you know, tricks, no one's... we call them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and tricks, there you go. That's a flashback for sure. Um, but yeah, no, pl you know, nobody knows those kind of games better than these players that are both sitting at eight and one. And uh, remember, Stefan's also in that race in the challenger side, sitting at mm -hmm. 16th place right now, kind of tied at 48 points with a lot of different players. So, you know, especially converting today into a top eight is going to be excellent for him, yep. as well as just maybe a couple more wins to get above that threshold where the line is at 54 right now. Yep. 54 points. He would love to do that. But, you know, if you can just get into the top eight, win a game there, you're in the top six, Boom, Bob's your uncle, you get into the World Championships. So plenty to play for this weekend as we fill up these World Championship slots as we work towards our top six and our champion for the streets of New Capenna. Duress yeah. is going to take a look-ski in hand and see what there is to see. Voltage Surge goes bye-bye, so dear Essica's Chariot will be safe to swing if that's the route that Shota wants to go. Has a couple of options in hand, though. Yeah, you make it sound so easy. Just just make it to the top six. Why don't you do that? Yeah. I recommend it. Easy. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right, here comes the chariot coming in because the all four of these cards are face up. So knowing that the chariot is free to do some damage. Da, 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 da. Chariot of cats. <laughs> I liked it. Didn't play Genie Fay there, really recognizing that the only way uh, Shota loses this game is if Goldspan Dragon or Lear starts getting, you know, going a little crazy here and playing Genie Fey would tap down that charm. Yep. Also knowing that there's a burn down the house, don't want to come in too much to the battlefield at this rate. Very Just try true, and win yeah. with what you've got on the battlefield and control whatever it is that Stefan deploys this turn. This Jun midrange deck is really cool from Shota. Oh, I've been I've been really loving watching this. When in doubt, Jund him out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Alrighty, it's time to burn, baby burn. Five points of damage to all of the goodies. So there goes the battlefield. Goodbye, friends. Next turn, about... Stefan's going to try and deploy his uh, gold span dragon into Lear, into whatever nonsense he can concoct. Now, Shota might feel pretty good about deploying some of the other nonsense he's got in hand there. We see the Jenny Fey. We have the Rivetus Charm to defend against a five drop, as well as another copy of Fable the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, so ideally, Shota would love to just go Genie Fey and Fable, crew up that Azika's Chariot, copy the Shaman, and have one of these just really absurd Azika's Chariot turns, but then the shields are down, and you have to look and just be like, all right, Stefan could just win the game, you know, just straight away mm -hmm. right here, and it becomes a little bit too risky, but on the flip side, what Shota's thinking about right now is, can I even afford to just play one threat and say go? Because then I'm not pressuring Stefan enough, and we've yep. seen what this Jeskai Storm deck can do if it's allowed some time, and... Shota just says, yeah, I cannot win the game. Uh, well, if I'm dead, you know, if Goldspan Dragon and Lear just goes <laughs> off next turn. So has Funny to just how that works, the huh? turn. I know, who would have hmm. guessed? Who would have guessed? Can't win if dead. Shucks. Yeah, because Goldspan Dragon, you get to play. <laughs> nice. Goldspan Dragon gets to hit play, and then Lear 
would be able to hit play as well. You attack with Goldspan Dragon, you get that second treasure, and then all the big scores and unexpected windfalls in the graveyard are online. Now all of a sudden, you, you know, you're drawing six, seven, eight cards a turn, and it's pretty easy to find the win from there. It does look like Stefan has sniffed something out here, though. So we're going to yeah. go to Expressive Iteration first and foremost, dig a little deeper, perhaps try and find a way to protect against any removal that Shote is holding on to. Stefan oh, has either lands. all lands or no lands with Expressive yeah. Iteration so far. There's no in-between. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is amusing, albeit slightly frustrating for Stefan, yes. no doubt. But, I mean, he's remaining cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, and look at this discipline, just not playing Goldspan Dragon, just saying, if I don't present my threats, this Jun deck can't really, you know, duress away these creatures. So right. if Stefan doesn't play these creatures, Shota will have to continue to leave mana open and slow down Shota's game plan. And now that's not going to work for the rest of the game because eventually Shota playing one threat a turn and then attacking with Chariot is going to take it over. So if Stefan didn't have anything to play this turn, you got to just jam the creatures. But Stefan's yep. pretty happy just going behold and seeing what he finds and then trying to do some more action next turn. Yeah. Very disciplined, like you mentioned. We got our black market kitty cat drawn <laughs> off the top, Fable the Mirror Breaker. It's going to go to chapter two. So we'll see a discard here. This isn't something we want to be playing with right now. Finds another land and could potentially see dear Ginny Faye hit the battlefield this turn. Yeah, it's Genie Fey or bring back the Tenacious Underdog. And honestly, it would just be crewing the Chariot anyways. So mm -hmm. I like just playing something that's gonna stick around on the battlefield, leave open that Riveteer's Charm. And uh, you know, the only decision now is if Shota wants to crew up the Chariot in the face of two unknown cards or just be comfortable just attacking with a 2-2 and getting either a cat, dog, or a treasure out of it. In response, we're going to see Behold the Multiverse. Let's see if there's anything to stop this Ginny Fey from hitting. Doesn't look like it, so let's see what the top of the library has in store. A big score, not too shabby. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Make a couple treasures, get rid of a redundant piece in hand here. So it's just going to be the Shaman that goes for it. Kitty Cat Car is going to stay right where it is, and the treasure becomes... Man's best friend. Who's a good yep. boy? You are. <laughs> yeah, Ginny Faye kind of looks like your household. I know you have some good cats and some good dogs. <laughs> <laughs> just just three cats and a dog, that's all. There you go, there you go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we didn't fire off the big score there. Looks like we're going to go towards Gold Span Dargan. And this is going to be a pretty <laughs> quick response here from Shota. Does he go for it? Oh, let's see. Yeah, I think Figures. step one from Stefan before Shota is actually given a response. Right now, you just get mm -hmm. to eat up these treasures and, uh, you know, create a good amount of value where if Goldsman Dragon goes away, all of a sudden you lose out on an extra mana from each of these treasures. Mm -hmm. So now, even with Goldspan Dragon going away with this Riveteer's Charm, most likely, uh, in response, Stefan can play that big score and if you were to yep. find more big scores, you just keep that chain going. And in an, <laughs> in an ideal world, Stefan is going to find some kind of answer um, yeah. to this charm. But, you know, Sajiri Shelter isn't really a card that you can find because it's protection where the charm is just having you sacrifice something. So there's not as many ways to prevent this. It unlike have to be against a bounce other spell, pieces right? of removal. Yeah, Bounce Spell or a Counter Spell, but Jwari Disruption yep. doesn't do it. So I'm looking to see if there's even a Counter Spell. I mean, there's Ottawara, there's March of Swirling Mist, there's Fading Hope. There's there's a couple ways that he can protect this Goldspan Dragon from this charm. And I think that's probably what Shota's going through in his mind now. He's like, is it worth the risk? Because there is enough mana there to big score, to do something else. There's three cards in hand. Chances are one of them draws cards for Stefan. So YOLO, I guess? Yeah, and honestly, looking at the list with this being post-board, we know how Ooh, Stefan sideboarded. I wow. love that decision. Yes. I love it too, but it is not going <laughs> to work out. It's not going to work out at all with this big score because big score is going to be able to be ca cast twice. So while it was a really cool <laughs> play, 
it's I am actually kind of shocked that we didn't see big score in combat here just in case you uh -huh. draw show confidence or anything because well that's already the plus nuts. three <laughs> yeah okay well let's see what the top of the deck yields here for Stefan Schutz is he gonna find some gas or is it all lands there's a jury <laughs> shelter and Ottawa a soaring city as you mentioned though big score gets to go again yeah, absolutely. You can get rid of one of these cards. You can protect something with Sajiri Shelter. And, you know, if we would have went for Sacrifice the Creature option, Ottawara was found off the top, so you yep. were able to at least bounce your Goldspan Dragon, and nothing yep. really would have happened there. Basically blank the spell, yeah. Yeah. Oof. There's a Spell Pierce and a second copy of Goldspan Dragon. Not too much else to do right now, though. Good timing on that Riveteer's mana. Charm, though, because Spell Pierce would have been an excellent card uh, if <laughs> Stefan would have found that in response. You know, even though it didn't have, like... On one hand, sure, you can exile some cards and you can play those next turn. On the other hand, there's still the underdog in the graveyard, which essentially does a similar thing in finding some cards for yeah. Shota to, to try and, you know get this game over and done with because now pressure's on mm -hmm. so i like your decision to just slow down Lear in that respect and just try and kill stuff yeah because especially with the list that we've been seeing um you know this jeskai uh storm deck at the top they don't have that way to just kill immediately without going to mm. combat so controlling Lear is very important against this specific version that doesn't have a smoldering egg. It doesn't have Kazandu's Fury, uh, something to just yeah. win right away. All right, so we've lined up our attackers, but who's getting in there? Ottawa, Soaring City is also deciding which one is going away. Then mm. the bugbear does create extra attackers, likely to get munched up here by Lear. Ginny Fay is going away. Pretty of Ottawa. Pretty cute line there, Stefan, was maybe thinking about <laughs> Ottawaring back a Zika's Chariot since there would only be three lands. But then Shota would have the option of just not attacking with Den and replaying yeah. it. For sure. So didn't want to lose any of the mana, is going to create two little friends off of Sokenzan, and here comes the team. Yeah, and Lear has got that four toughness, so you do get to kind of just mm -hmm. eat something up for free to make sure you keep Lear around for all the good stuff, in air quotes, that's in the graveyard. Uh, <laughs> not too much really available at this moment. Uh, so another card we're really looking for off the top, if you're Stefan fans, is a big score and unexpected windfall to yeah. just get the ball rolling. Definitely so. So we're going to sign a couple blockers here. What is the biggest threat? Looks like it's going to be our little treasure shaman. Just chump lock the Eska chariot and kill off the good dog. Yeah, and really nice play by bouncing uh, Genie Fay there. If you didn't do that, the den creates a cat or a dog. The mm -hmm. treasure, the shaman creates a cat or a dog, and then the chariot creates <laughs> a cat or a dog. So that's much more important than a one one, a treasure and just a copied shaman. The shaman is pretty good, yep. but outside of that, you would much rather have creatures. For sure. And the nice thing is there's only one burn down the house in the deck. There's also Cinderclasm to concern yourself with if you're Shota, yeah. but at this point, he's feeling pretty confident and just wants to make as many creatures as he possibly can. Yeah, and uh, I believe that burn down the house was one of the cards that went away in Exiled, so no option to have that gone. Uh, one Cinderclasm, which almost assuredly came in here as well. Um, but not the biggest deal. Ooh, that's a Thirst big draw. Is pretty good. Hello. That's a big draw. And this is one of the difference between the, the team who played this deck. Thirst for Discovery wasn't in every sideboard, so let's see if this uh. pays off here. Big score, Lear, and a Ooh. spike field hazard, so that's pretty darn good indeed. Yeah, that is excellent. This is looking very good. For Stefan, now you're able to thirst from the graveyard. You're either to double big score here to be able mm -hmm. to draw four new cards at essentially a free cost. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's not great. Going to do yeah, it again. Couple lands. All right. Go again. Whee! <laughs> and at this point, all Shota can do is just watch. This is the point where we're going to go gold fishing with this deck just to see 
what sort of power we can get from the rest of the library here for Stefan Schutz. Still sitting at 11, but this board is growing on the other side of the battlefield. Fable the Mirror Breaker and Spikefield has it drawn. Still not wonderful. I think we're going to see a thirst here pretty soon. I would think so as well. And you can just kind of see Shota's just like, ah, oh, I wish I was playing counter spells right now so I could be doing <laughs> some interacting. <laughs> uh. Yeah, gotta be thirst here. Otherwise, maybe Stefan is considering first playing the gold span dragon and then attacking. Mm -hmm. But if that happens, then you're gonna get four mana off the attacking gold span dragons. Thirst is gonna be able to put you um, down to one mana. Spikefield Hazard can then put you back up to two mana. And if you find a show confidence, boom, that's it. We're, we're online. And that seems to yep. be uh, the avenue we're going for here. Oh yeah. Let's rock and roll. Eight power in the air. Can Stefan kill the Hall of Famer right here, right now? Doesn't decide to go get damage for first. It. So I mean that's a that's a bit of a problem with these kind of configurations. Now, no matter yeah. what, Shota is gonna get another turn where if show of confidence was was found, you gotta think you can probably string together. I mean, not even you got to think. It's 100% guarantee that Stefan would have found a way to, to win here because of the Leer, mm -hmm. where you get to show of confidence and then goes to the graveyard, show of confidence again. So yeah. maybe something that Stefan's going to be kicking himself a little bit if he finds show of confidence and Shota were to still be able to kill him next turn. Well, let's see what we find. Discard a basic land to avoid discarding two things. It's a galvanic iteration and an unexpected windfall. So, don't think you would have gotten the kill here with uh, what was drawn there. Yeah, it seems like you would have one mana floating, so you could spike field hazard your own creature, and then you mm -hmm. could, uh, you'd be up to three mana, and then you could galvanic iteration plus spike field to get up to four mana, and then unexpected windfall again. So it still would have been live, but if you break, you're dead. You know, so this yeah. is probably a little bit safer of a play. Hopefully we can find some other disruption um, from Stefan's side to be able to interact a little bit more. Yeah, let's see where we go with this. So spike field, spike field. We're going to get some more mana here. So working with three now. What's your follow-up play? There's a land still. There is an also, there's also the unexpected windfall. And here we go again. <laughs> Roll the wheel. <laughs> Goodbye, dragon. That's not something you see very often. Goldspan dragon getting discarded, but that's the last card in hand. What else we find? That was good. The dragon's fire is not too shabby. Yeah, that's a, that's actually ideal. This is what you're trying to find mm. now at this stage of the game. It's not show confidence anymore, although that would be good. <laughs> Removal to make sure you do not have your life total go to zero is what you're doing. Fading hope, another excellent that's card. Me. Yeah, this is yeah. this is very good. Oh yeah, we're just stringing together these big scores now. I heard you like free spells, Corey. <laughs> I'm a fan. You like free, I'm a fan. You like free spells? Absolutely. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> One thing we do got to keep an eye on as well. It's not the biggest deal quite yet, but we do see that clock to start popping up for Stefan. It is a very click intensive deck. So, you know, <laughs> your, when your turn is five, six minutes at a time, when you're going off, <laughs> it, it can be a bit of a problem. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad he targets at the other gold span dragon. He was feeling a little left out there, I think. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta give them equal love. Yeah, made me a little nervous that uh, you don't have, you don't want to accidentally kill that gold span dragon too. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, here's the oh, combo. Oh goodness me! All righty, galvanic iterations. Gonna copy. Big score. Let's go digging deeper. What more can we find? This is just <laughs> gross, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's like I don't need that. Get out of here. Man, get here out of here. Now let's make now some we're gonna treasures. Get four treasures. Cards. And now this is really the plan for this Jeskai <laughs> Storm deck with their configuration. It's not yeah. that I'm going to win on the same term very often. It is just, I really wanna make sure I can create such a good defensive hand that when I yeah. say go, you know, there, there's a good possibility that Stefan can just deal with every creature on the battlefield here <laughs> yeah. by Galvanic Iteration and Dragonfire and stuff like that. Yep, and that's what yeah. we're gonna see. Just kill all uh -huh. your creatures. Say go, and then you're gonna left with 11 power. Shota's yeah. gonna have an Azika's yeah. Chariot and like a den to deal with, and that just will not be enough. <laughs> really cool stuff. 
Oh my goodness me. So yeah, certainly wasn't going to attempt to go for the kill, but we'll kill everything in its wake. Talk about some dragon fire. Well, here, have three bouts of it as all of the pivotal creatures are getting dealt with on this battlefield. Goodbye, Ginny. Goodbye, shamans. Thanks yeah. for participating. And just in case you want the card to really be as fitting as what the situation is right now, you have double uh -huh. fading hope to really you know, cleanse any hope that Shota would have for this game <laughs> uh, to be available at Stefan's hands. You, 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 and that's so good against tokens too. So oh, it's just yeah. gross. Or pretty good underdog against time. tenacious Help. underdog. Mm. Give us a hand here, bud. Yeah, Fading Hope will truly be the final bit of hope for this game, but we'll be heading to a game three where Stefan's a little short on yep. time and Shota's going to be trying to just automatically clinch that seat at the mm -hmm. World Championship for sure. Not have to worry about yep. it anymore. Yep, getting that done and dusted would be fantastic for Shota's side of things. It doesn't look like he's going to win this matchup, though, with the nonsense that we just saw Stefan deploy but as you mentioned yeah. he is running a little short on time so he's gonna have to hustle in the next game if he wants to get this done in a comfortable time and you're seeing stefan not fire off anything right now because it doesn't matter you just look i'm not gonna die to your attack and you can't mm. beat these gold span dragons so until that equation changes there's no reason for stefan to, to do anything yeah i mean he doesn't even need to do this right now but he's, yeah even doesn't have to do that but why not He's going to yeet these poor shaman out of the way so that Lear can get in for an attack as well, just in case there is a Riveteer's Charm or something of the sort. Yeah, it's kind of like those, uh, you know, skateboards that you use with your hands and you're just showing off your tricks <laughs> to your buddies at the playground. Just be like, look what I can do, though. I can do more tricks instead of just winning, you know? Like, really got to go the maximum strange analogy. Stunting. Thank you. Oh thank my you. gosh. <laughs> Just giving away your age now, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all we had back in the day, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, that and Taz's and whatever else we could get our grubby little hands on, but there you go. Let's go, <laughs> game three. Man, shows us just like, boom, I'm done. Let's go. Bring yep, it. Yep. That really leads me to believe that maybe Shota changed one or two cards, player draw, or post board against this matchup. It's just, you need these specific cards. And, uh, you know, it does kind of scream that a lot of the kind of, you know, fun of, one ofs that you're seeing from Shota's deck that are really bad against blue counter spells. So, uh, Ziatora being a big one. Tybalt, the backside of Velky being something you take out. Ray of Enfeeblement being the worst card that you immediately have to take out. That's a metagame decision. You know, it's very good against yeah. Runes and Esper, but will be very bad against these Jeskai Storm decks. So he's happy with what he's rocking for this one. And on Stefan's side of things, let's see what he's got here. Brings in a Spell Pierce, brings in another Dragon's Fire Thirst for Discovery, as well as that burn down the house. So this may be from game number two, sideboarding decisions, because, yeah, not too much is going to change. Yeah, not too much is changing at all. And and one big card we want to uh, put some attention to is show confidence. We've been talking about it, yeah. you know, as the big yeah, out. it wasn't in. It, it wasn't in. It makes sense why Stefan was having a pretty <laughs> tough time finding that card. Uh, it's all coming together now. But just realizes yeah. that... You know, up against these other aggro decks, you turn into this is it control deck that, yeah. you know, technically we're going to call it Jeskai because there's one Sejiri shelter in there, but it's just is it dragon control trying to make mm -hmm. sure that Shota's battlefield stays under control and play a gold span dragon, use that mana to once again uh, interact in some way and just close out the game kind of like we saw for this last game instead of one big flashy turn, even though with all those big scores, it was pretty flashy, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. This is a lovely hand from Shota. Just look at this. A duress yeah. into a hearse. Heck, yeah. yeah. That's like, Great cool. hands you put things in your bin. I'm going to yeah. eat them. Absolutely. Good hands for both. And hearse, while it is an amazing card against everybody's favorite blue mythic Lear, but it is not <laughs> that good against Goldspan Dragon. So that is another card where it, the threat has to line up with what Stefan's doing. And if Stefan, you know, jukes a little bit and goes more of the Goldspan plan, uh, it's not going to be as effective. For sure. Expressive duration drawn here for Stefan. Now decision, does he play the Jawar Disruption as a land, or is he just going to drop down the mountain there? So it's going to lead off with that. We see Den of the Bugbear and Tenacious Underdog 
to kick things off for Shota. Like I mentioned, the quicker he can kill Stefan, the better it is for him. But he did force Stefan to play it out in the last game and used up a bunch of his time. So sitting on eight and a half minutes as we get this game underway. Absolutely, and plenty of time, but of course, definitely something to keep in mind. Now, one thing I want to bring some attention to is that Genie Fey, uh, not able to be cast. You know, it is that kind of weird hybrid <laughs> mana where it is in this deck, it is two green and a red. You know, yeah. you, you do not have any planes or anything uh, to be able to cast it that way. So with help from some treasures or a top deck, you can get that card going, uh, which leads me to be slightly confused, definitely slightly, because I don't like to question Shota ever, but playing that instead of <laughs> Fable, which would then give a treasure to be able to cast Genie Fae. Yeah, so let's see what the plan is here. It's now going to be Fable the Mirror Breaker, plays around Draw Disruption, which allows him to get that Goblin Shaman down on the battlefield. Storm Carved Coast is the land for turn for Stefan, who's more than happy to just pass it on back. And uh, this hearse is going to keep on chowing things. Yeah, absolutely. And right as you say that, playing around Dwari Disruption is exactly what Shota was doing to not play Fable the Mirror Breaker. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I preface with I should never question Shota. I just missed that. So that's on me. <laughs> it's all good. All righty. Now, what do we discard here? If anything, there is a land that can go west and find a new card for Shota. Yeah. There's a Genie would... he can't cast just yet, but with that pathway, he'd be able to. Then he's happy enough sending Genie Fey away, finds a Shadow Skull Smashing and a Voltage Surge. Yeah, and that Genie Fey was the last bit of pressure that you can, you know, progress onto the battlefield here. There is a mm -hmm. den if you want to get busy right now, and there we go. Here it Ooh, comes. Let's go. Yeah, oh, I love then... it. I love it too. This is a big hit. And this is putting a lot of pressure on Stefan to, you know, deal or cast Do that something. burn down the house that Shota knows about already. <laughs> and yeah, this is a lot of damage. Don't just do something. Stand there. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. That is a lot. And Den will survive. Oof. Burn down the Oof. house. So will yep. Unlicensed Hearse. And Unlicensed oh, Hearse can get up to a 4 4 already. Uh, so we just need one more power to just be able to finish this this game off yeah. already. So I don't think oh. Stefan can can take the turn here to actually clear this board. Are we going to see the 6-1-1 one, one play? Something that we don't really so. see? All right. These little devils aren't going to burn down the house right away. They're just going to hang out and try to yeah. do some blocking. Yep. So Stefan rightly making sure that he's got some blockers on this battlefield and... These are too many little dudes for uh, Shota to deal with here. And the way that they can block, they would be able to kill off any other remaining creatures that survive the combat step. But Unlicensed Hearse is going to make sure those all go away and these little devils are now on blocking duty. And even with these devils being great blockers, eventually 611s do not match up against the power level of these Jun decks. You know, eventually okay. Hearse is going to get there. Eventually Den tokens are going to overpower. All these kind of things that can happen to the devil. And then you just look at Stefan's hand, just two more expressive iterations to try to hopefully find something. But when you're already down to five, you know, it's pretty risky already. So Stefan in a lot of trouble here. Doesn't have to commit more than the three. But if he wants to kill that reflection of Kiki Jiki, he's gonna have to get a couple more blockers in there to deal the damage, kill off the two toughness creatures that will remain on the battlefield. Yeah, so with this block right there, I think you do just have to get four in front if you wanna be able to deal with the whole kind of wrath, the whole board, or at least Shota's yeah. board. Cause even if you take one here, it's slightly risky, you know, putting yourself into four range. You know, there's a lot of magic number fours on the battlefield. The the hearse den creates four powers. So mm -hmm. if Shota can ever go end step, clear off the rest of the devils, animate den, now all of a sudden you're in business. <laughs> <laughs> so the one little den of the bugbear gobbo is gonna be chilling. Gets through for one point of damage. Three damage to come. So able to kill off the reflection of Kiki Jiki as well as the remaining two one. Yeah, this feels like a game where Riveteer's Charm might actually see the, you know, the mode that we don't see so often of just flipping mm -hmm. over three cards and going to cast it. Oh, never mind. There's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the Vaulted Don't Surge to deal that. with that dragon already, but the yeah. Sejiri Shelter would be able to prevent that. Yep. 
Oof. Or even just the sacrifice from the Riveteer's charm. That would get it yeah. super dead. But uh, again, Stefan's showing great discipline, not rushing into it. He's got the little one ones down to protect against any lethal threat. For now, at least. So yeah, let's just keep digging deeper in, and then uh, next turn, could see some fireworks. Five minutes, 40 seconds remaining for Stefan. Yeah, I think there will be a next turn, but, uh, you know, it's still not looking very good here. We do still have the three blockers, and, and it'll be interesting to see if Shota, with four unknown cards from Stefan, fires off this Riveteer's Charm at an end step. That's kind of this cool ability where it uh, checks the cards at your end step, so... Shota will have mm. all next turn to cast those three cards. All right. Finds an Unleashed Inferno, Zeotora's Proving Grounds, and a Duress. So, Unlicensed Hearse, gonna carry on munching away. Up to six power now. Not the best hits, realistically. You know, mm -hmm. you can play a tap land, you can Duress, and you can deal seven damage to a devil, I guess, but <laughs> get that <laughs> devil out of there. Sure, why not? <laughs> it's an the extremely his, dead his... devil. <laughs> yeah, he gets his own back, though. <laughs> Take that, Shota. Ooh, okay. fit with a mirror breaker off the top. So now we see but a duress. First. And yeah. now if we can deal, we can deal with one creature. So the hearse is not lethal quite yet, but we're definitely getting close to that point where yeah. we can safely send Shota to the world championship. Oh, Shota is trying his darndest here, as we're going to see Fable the Rear Breaker hit. There's our little Goblin Shaman. Still a piece of removal in hand here as well. Is it go time? I wonder if we're going to wait one more turn. Yeah, the hearse can be crewed right now, and there's, I think, exactly what Shota's doing right now. Is there any way my hearse can die? You know, Voltage Surge mixed with mm. both Devils blocking... Uh, is the thing, but Duress did put all this stuff into face-up mode, so the hearse can be dealt five damage with Spikefield Hazard and both of the Devils, so yep. that is worth it to Shota to get one of those dead. Yep. And uh, without losing both blockers, is able to ping one point of damage to the Shaman and then Spikefield Hazard to get it off the battlefield, so Shota's going to need another creature to crew the hearse if that's the way he wants to go does also have the underdog in the graveyard that he can blitz back and has that one piece of removal for the dragon should he need it yeah definitely not over yet this leer is looking okay actually there's still a decent <laughs> amount of cards for a hearse you know being around this often uh, I was assuming we only have, like, a spike field hazard, but that's not the worst. <laughs> you do have two of them, at least, but <laughs> yep. not the most ideal plays. Yeah, now is an interesting decision point, because there's only the dragon in hand and the joy disruption. If we get rid of Lear here on the end step... Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Then, then you have Fable the Mirror Breaker to find one more removal spell to just lock it up yeah. right now. Or you just play this slow and steady. You know, Stefan is kind of in the abyss, as we like to say, where you just have to sacrifice a creature every turn to this giant attacker that, well, if you don't block, you're dead. So it, it's a tough <laughs> spot to get out from there. <laughs> yeah, unlicensed Hurst just riding over pedestrians left, right, and center. You'd think he was playing Grand Theft Auto or something. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. Streets of Nuka Pen are rough, man. <laughs> So we didn't see a discard here. This reflection of Kiki Jiki does create another driver for this unlicensed hearse. Yep. You could see Tenacious Underdog come back, but wow, no attack here at all. Mm -hmm. And are we just letting Lear untap without voltage surging? That seems slightly risky. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here, but I, I kind of yeah. like leaving the hearse back because anything that Lear targets, the hearse can just munch, I guess. So Shota decided to wait till upkeep to do anything, kind of forcing the hand. Looks like we're targeting nice. Expressive Iteration and Sejiri Shelter. Behold is not one of the targets, and both of those cards are not able to be cast at this time. Cool. And Shota's just saying, yeah, if you want to cast Behold, sure. But Fading Hope had to have been probably one of the best draws here. 
Stefan maybe wants to retap that auto tapper to leave up two blue sources for double fading hope. Decides mm -hmm. against it. But yeah, that could be a card that actually keeps Stefan in this. That was a great draw. Yeah, voltage surge with a treasure to sack. Goldspan Dragon is wow. the target here. And the fading hope can send the you... critter back and get another treasure. Yeah, you can actually do a lot more. So fading hope, mm. you can uh, you can Fading Hope Goldspan Dragon with Fading Hope on the stack, sacrifice both treasures to create four mana and recast it. That's the surface yep. value play that you can do. But with Spikefield Hazard, you can actually net two mana so that when Goldspan Dragon returns to hand and attacks, you can also cast Behold from the graveyard, yep. which is pretty impressive. No, that, that's, that's pretty darn big here for Stefan, who is in desperate need of well. some action at this point to keep himself in this game. He's only got two minutes and 45 seconds left though, so he needs to put foot and go. This dragon needs to hang around. Decides not to go for this and is just gonna let Goldspan Dragon die to prioritize Fading Hope being left up just in case. I mean, not even just in case, it's, it's the inevitable win a lethal attacker comes into play with this yeah. Hurst, and Fading Hope is especially good against Hurst because it does reset it. As yeah. long as I'm understanding this card correctly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, everything kinda hide goes away. It. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Shota Yasuoka, is this your moment to shine, sir? Are we going to see you in the World Championship? It is getting down to the wire here. Two minutes left for Stefan. Doesn't have all that much going for him right now, but can prevent a big ol' attack here from this hearse on the other side of the battlefield. Zeotor is proving grounds. Likely to get cycled away. There is also the underdog in the graveyard. The one thing that um, I think Shota has going for him, plenty of things, of course, but the fact that this attack is not even lethal, even if there isn't a fading hope. So Shota's just going to play this turn as just best mm -hmm. possible, even with the animated den. It's three damage getting through. Um, if my maths are correctly, there are correct. So we'll see if this hearse just attacks, you know, just as the one creature trying to get in there and try to set up a big yeah. attack next turn. Um, or if you want to get that tenacious underdog there so you can start drawing some cards, that's actually probably the worst case scenario for Shota. If you bring back tenacious underdog and crew the hearse and then the mm -hmm. hearse gets bounced, then all of a sudden you can't recast it unless you also attack with the shaman. So a lot of ifs here. Yeah. So a lot of lines ifs. with just one card, you know? <laughs> not not even a card yeah. in hand. <laughs> it's a card in a graveyard, but you yeah. know what? Tenacious Underdog is going to get in on the action here, and we will likely see a swing here with the Shaman and the Underdog. The hearse is staying back, though. So we will get a treasure off of this attack trigger. We will get cards off of the Tenacious Underdog, unless that is the card that Stephanie bounces. Okay, really interesting. Prioritizing leaving that fading hope around. And you know, Stefan Stefan is just really, really praying, like, okay, gold span, here we go, one time. <laughs> nope. Another not fading it. hope. Unexpected windfall has a lot of work to do here for Stefan Schutz. Fading hope into the bin. More treasures being made. Two cards drawn. Ottawa, Soaring City, and a land. That's not gonna cut it. Unexpected windfall gets rid of another land. We need to find a dragon and we need it right now. That's not Oof. a dragon, that's a voltage surge and an island. So oh, no. this is bad news bears here for Stefan as we go below the two minute mark. Yeah, right now Lear, it's just click swing, cards. Bud. It's just click yeah. cards at this point. Go, swing. You need to get this game done. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> go, hit things. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh all right so fading hope is the only way to prevent these attackers from yeah basically just murdering Ooh, that's a here. hasty threat that's a hasty lethal Woo! threat off the top so now this is Thrag two Tusk big at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right let's go is it go time are we gonna see the game end right here with the draw of the workshop war chief it can be blitzed in. It leaves behind dudes. It's a big dumb trample, bro, for five and three. This one might be over this turn. Let's see. 
Yeah, this card's incredible too. It's it's really only Shota that's bringing Workshop War Chief so far, and mm -hmm. it, you know, kind of surprising because this is just an incredible card. You say Thrag Test at home, but this is the improved Thrag Test for sure. Thrag Test <laughs> is the Thrag Test at home right now. <laughs> Here we go, Workshop Warchief, ready to rock and roll, as is the hearse. Will we see the underdog come back as well to try and finish this game off right here, right now? And I think we're even at the point where, like, now even if somehow Stefan really controls the battlefield here, I don't know if the clock will allow Stefan uh -huh. to win this game. And, I mean, we were kind of joking about how fast Shota plays and how impressive it is. Well, Shota has eight minutes right now and can really think out all his plays and doesn't have to make any mistakes that are, are not unforced. You know, it's tough to play when you got that yeah. clock coming down. It's almost impossible to play perfectly at this stage of the game. Yep, keeps himself alive. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. One minute, ten seconds remaining, and Shota has padded his life total with the big chunky Rhino, bro. So back up to 14. All that damage that Lear dealt is undone. So a thirst for discovery in hand. Shota has the option to recast the hearse or just get the Fable of the Mirror Breaker down. He goes for that. More dudes on the board. Draw disruption off the top. Not what you need. Get rid of that. Let's find a dragon, please. He's asking his library Big score, let's go, one time. Where is this dragon? Oof. Not there. Under a minute. Oh my goodness, this is tense times here for Stefan Schutz, sitting at eight and one, but I think he's gonna go to eight oh. and two, my friend, because we are not finding a dragon to save his life here. Dragon's Fire can take care of one of these creatures, can kill off another one, but he's not gonna get it done just with Lear alone. Yeah, and really have no fear for Stefan fans, though. They're both doing great in this tournament. They're both still doing great in this uh, race for the world championship. Uh, but yeah, really looking like it's yep. going to be Shota's game here. It is indeed. That's the GG from Stefan. Couldn't find his hasty flyers. And Shota Yasaoka locks up his spot in the world championship. So congratulations to Shota Yasaoka.